Actually, it was even as recent as yesterday, someone um, had come up to me and uh, found out that, oh, you're a Prabhupada disciple, so did you get any personal association from Shula Prabhupada? I think uh, a lot of us have been asked that question um, throughout the years. So it didn't really actually work like that because um, towards, as we know, Prabhupada passed away in 1977, but sometime when I first come across Krishna Consciousness, the Krishna Conscious Movement in 1974, even before that, Srila Prabhupada had become resigned to his um, mission of uh, translating all the books of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Chaitanya Chamrita, for the benefit of um, all the citizens of Kali Yuga. So, um, as we say, Prabhupada was the Yuga Acharya for the next 10,000 years. Consequently, it's like Sukha was saying that Prabhupada was totally absorbed in the translation of uh, Srila Prabhupada's books. And to that effect, he had, I won't call them bodyguards, but very, very caring devotees. So, like he had his secretary, he had his personal servant, just like try imagine getting past Harry Sori to see Srila Prabhupada. So, and then of course the temple management. So Prabhupada was uh, solely engaged. I know I do remember one time I came very, very early to the Melbourne temple and everybody was, well, pretty unconscious at that point in time. The devotees been working very hard, they were fast asleep, but there was one light on and that was Srila Prabhupada's light and he had already begun to translate um, his works. So I just want to sort of talk a little bit about the chronology of uh, the scope of uh, the, the scope of Srila Prabhupada's um, service to um, humanity. So when I joined, first come across Krishna Consciousness in September of 1974, the fourth canto part one had just come out. And if you know, that's a picture of Lord Shiva on the cover uh, speaking with Sati. So I just received that book. Oh, this is Prabhupada's new book. So it's practically the first book I ever picked up, which was very fortunate for me because up to that point in time, I thought that Lord Shiva was God. So that straightened things out for me. And then the next year, uh, when I joined up in Melbourne in 1975, Srila Prabhupada, he had finished translating the fourth canto. He was uh, finished with the fifth canto and he was on to the sixth canto. But I think at that point in time, the fifth canto did come to Srila Prabhupada while he was in Melbourne. I'm not quite sure whether it was or wasn't. I think I remember that. And they presented the fifth canto to Srila Prabhupada, fifth canto, part one. And Srila Prabhupada was looking at it. And if you know the fifth canto, the pictures at the start of the fifth canto have got these poor living entities getting um, stitched up by the Yamadudas for their um, uh, sinful activities of the past. They're rather gruesome pictures. And someone took a photo when Prabhupada focused on these pictures and there was a smile. There was a, Prabhupada was smiling. So you see the canto there, all the living entities uh, undergoing <laughs> excruciating torture. And that sort of bewildered me for quite a number of years that Prabhupada's smiling and he's uh, open at this picture. And then I'd like to think, I don't know, I, you can't presume what Prabhupada thinks always, but I'd like to think that actually Prabhupada's looking at his devotees and he's saying, just see what I've saved you from, like that. So anyway, that was the fifth canto in 1970, <laughs> 1970, 76, was it? Yeah, in 76 he received the book, but he was on the sixth canto. And then later on in 1976, I'd just like to read this if I may. This is the last, um, when he finished the eighth canto. It's a very interesting uh, moment of panic. We're looking for the glasses here. Uh, 
bear with me for a second and take a deep breath. This commentation has been finished in our New Delhi Centre today. This is the 8th Canto, the 1st of September 1976, the day of Radhastami, by the grace of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the Acharyas. Srila Narottam Das Thakur says, Tandera Tarana Seva Bhakti Senivasa Jami Jami Hai, Hey Abhilas. I am attempting to present Srimad Bhagavatam in the English language by the order of my spiritual master, Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Savas Vati Thakur. And by his grace, the work of translation is gradually progressing. And European and American devotees who have joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement are helping me considerably. Thus we have expectations of finishing this great task before my passing away. All glories to Guru and Bhuranga. So at this point in time we have September 1976 where he's gone through uh, the fourth canto, fifth canto, sixth, seventh, eighth canto and he finished the whole volume with Sri Chaitanya Chari Kamriti completed that. So we were deluged by 17 volumes of Sri Chaitanya Charitam Rita in that particular year. So just... That's what we really have to wrap up with. Okay, so... All right, so... Uh, I'll wrap it up here again before you... Save, save for next year. We, we won't be able to sleep. One more, one more minute. Okay. A lot of time. So, the whole concept of... Bani and Bhakti, did you get Prabhupada's association? Yes, we did. We're on the road, Sankatan, and every time a new book had come out, we'd get so excited. Oh, what Prabhupada's book. And we'd be reading it, and we'd be in total ecstasy there. So, Prabhupada, I give my respects to you, you're the Yugaracharya, and uh, this is how I got my association with Prabhupada. Go. Thank you. Thank you.